Have you been feeling different lately? Like something deep inside you is stirring, waiting to be noticed? You're not alone. All around the world, people are experiencing a powerful shift. It's called the Divine Feminine Awakening, and it's not just for women. This amazing energy is touching everyone, regardless of gender, and it's bringing big changes. Now, you might be thinking, Divine Feminine? That sounds complicated. But don't worry, it's simpler than you might think. The Divine Feminine is all about the softer, more intuitive side that exists in all of us. It's the part that feels deeply, cares strongly, and sees the world in a different light. Imagine you're looking at a beautiful painting. The Divine Feminine is like suddenly noticing all the small details you missed before. The soft brush strokes, the hidden meanings, the play of light and shadow. It's always been there, but now you're truly seeing it for the first time. This awakening isn't just a small change. It's like waking up from a long sleep and realizing the world is full of colors you never knew existed. It can turn your life upside down, in the best way possible. Now, here's the thing. This awakening is happening whether we notice it or not. But if we ignore the signs, we might miss out on something truly special. It's like having a treasure map, but never bothering to look for the X that marks the spot. Sure, you can go on with your life as usual, but you'll always wonder what you might have found if you'd just taken the time to look. But what happens if you do pay attention? That's where the magic begins. When you start noticing the signs of divine feminine awakening, you open yourself up to a whole new world of possibilities. It's like finding a door inside yourself that leads to a room full of gifts you never knew you had. Maybe you'll discover a talent for art you never knew existed. Or perhaps you'll find a new depth to your relationships, connecting with people in ways you never thought possible. You might even find a new sense of purpose, a calling that fills your heart with joy and your life with meaning. The Divine Feminine Awakening isn't about becoming a different person. It's about becoming more of who you truly are. It's like finally putting on glasses after years of squinting at the world. Suddenly, everything comes into focus, and you realize just how much you've been missing. So, what exactly is this divine feminine energy we're talking about? Think of it as a natural force, like the wind or the tides. Just as these forces shape the world around us, the divine feminine shapes our inner world. The Divine Feminine is all about connection. It's the part of us that feels linked to everything around us, to other people, to nature, to the whole universe. It's like realizing you're not just a drop in the ocean, but that the entire ocean is within you. This energy is also deeply creative. It's the spark that ignites imagination, the wellspring of inspiration. When the Divine Feminine awakens, many people find themselves drawn to creative pursuits. You might suddenly feel the urge to write poetry, paint, dance, or make music. It's as if a channel has opened up, pouring out ideas and inspiration. The Divine Feminine is intuitive. It's that gut feeling you get, that inner knowing that goes beyond logic. When this energy awakens, you might find yourself trusting your instincts more, listening to that quiet voice inside that somehow just knows things. It's also about nurturing and caring. This doesn't mean you suddenly want to mother everyone around you. Instead, it's about recognizing the value of care and compassion, both for others and for yourself. You might find yourself being kinder, more patient, more understanding, not just with others, but with yourself too. The Divine Feminine is also deeply connected to the cycles of nature. Just as the moon waxes and wanes, just as the seasons change, the Divine Feminine recognizes that life moves in cycles too. There are times for action and times for rest, times for growth and times for letting go. Now, you might be wondering, if I'm not a woman, can I still experience this? Absolutely. The Divine Feminine isn't about gender. It's an energy that exists in everyone, regardless of how they identify. Think of it like this. We all have both the sun and the moon in our lives, regardless of who we are. The Divine Feminine is just one aspect of the whole, balancing out the more active, assertive energies we often associate with the masculine. As this energy awakens, it doesn't replace other parts of you. Instead, it brings balance. Imagine a seesaw that's been tipped to one side for a long time. 
The divine feminine awakening is like finally evening out that seesaw, bringing harmony and balance to your life. In the next part of our journey, we're going to explore the signs that show this amazing energy is awakening in you. These signs are like signposts on a road, guiding you towards a more balanced, connected, and fulfilling life. They're not always obvious. Sometimes they're subtle, gentle nudges rather than big, dramatic changes. But once you know what to look for, you'll start noticing them everywhere. Remember, this awakening is a journey, not a destination. It's not about reaching some perfect state of being. Instead, it's about growing, learning, and becoming more of who you truly are. It's about embracing all parts of yourself and finding balance in a world that often feels chaotic and disconnected. As we dive into these signs, keep an open mind. You might recognize some of them in yourself right away. Others might take time to show up. And that's okay. Everyone's journey is different, and there's no right or wrong way to experience this awakening. The most important thing is to stay curious and open. Pay attention to the little changes in how you feel, how you think, and how you see the world. These small shifts can be the first hints of a big transformation happening within you. So, are you ready to discover the signs of divine feminine awakening? Are you prepared to embark on a journey of self-discovery that could change your life in ways you never imagined? Let's dive in and explore the first sign, a deepening connection to nature. Imagine waking up one day and suddenly feeling drawn to spend more time outside. Maybe you find yourself stopping to admire flowers you've walked past a hundred times before. Or perhaps you feel a sudden urge to go for a walk in the park, even if you've never been much of an outdoor person. This growing connection to nature is often one of the first signs that the divine feminine is awakening within you. It's like nature is calling to you, inviting you to remember a connection that's always been there, but that you might have forgotten. You might find yourself wanting to garden, even if you've never grown so much as a houseplant before. There's something deeply satisfying about getting your hands in the soil, nurturing seeds, and watching them grow. It's a tangible way of connecting with the cycles of life, of experiencing the magic of growth and transformation. Or maybe you find yourself drawn to trees. You might feel an urge to hug a tree, to lean against its trunk and feel its steady, grounding energy. Don't worry if this sounds a bit strange. It's actually a practice that many cultures have recognized as healing and centering. Sunsets and sunrises might take on a new significance. You might find yourself waking up early, excited to watch the sun come up. Or you might feel called to pause at the end of the day, to witness the beautiful colors as the sun sets. These daily shows of nature's beauty can become like a spiritual practice, a moment of connection and wonder in your day. You might also start noticing the moon more. The cycles of the moon, from new moon to full moon and back again, might start to feel significant. You might find yourself feeling different energies at different phases of the moon, or using the moon cycles to guide your activities and intentions. This deepening connection with nature isn't just about appreciating beauty, though that's certainly part of it. It's about recognizing that you're part of nature too. It's about feeling the rhythms of the natural world in your own body and life. You might start to notice how you feel different in different seasons. Maybe you feel more energetic and outgoing in spring and summer, more introspective and quiet in fall and winter. This isn't just about the weather. It's about tuning into the natural cycles of activity and rest, growth, and retreat. As this connection deepens, you might find yourself becoming more aware of environmental issues. The health of the planet might start to feel personal because you recognize that your own health and the health of the earth are deeply connected. This doesn't mean you have to become an environmental activist overnight, but you might find yourself making small changes in your life. Maybe you start recycling more carefully or choose to walk instead of drive when you can. Maybe you become more mindful of the products you buy, choosing ones that are kinder to the earth. You might also find yourself drawn to natural materials. Cotton, wool, wood, stone. These might start to feel more appealing than synthetic materials. You might find yourself wanting to surround yourself with plants or decorate your home with natural elements like shells or crystals. This connection to nature can also show up in unexpected ways. You might find yourself more attuned to the weather, able to sense when rain is coming even before you check the forecast. 
or you might develop a fascination with the stars, spending time gazing at the night sky and feeling a sense of awe at the vastness of the universe. Animals might start to play a bigger role in your life too. You might feel more drawn to pets or notice wild animals more. You might find yourself pausing to watch birds or feeling a special connection with certain animals. All of these experiences are ways of reconnecting with the natural world, of remembering that you're part of something much bigger than yourself. This connection is a fundamental aspect of the divine feminine energy. As you notice these changes, try to embrace them. Spend time in nature when you can, even if it's just sitting in a local park for a few minutes. Notice the plants growing in the cracks of city sidewalks, the birds nesting on urban buildings. Nature is everywhere once you start looking for it. This growing connection to nature is just the beginning. As the divine feminine continues to awaken within you, you'll likely start noticing other changes too. You might find yourself becoming more intuitive, more in touch with your emotions, more creative. These changes might feel strange at first, especially if you're used to approaching life in a very logical, structured way, but try to stay open to them. The divine feminine awakening is about bringing balance, about reconnecting with parts of yourself and the world that you might have overlooked. Remember, this is a journey. There's no need to force anything or to try to make changes happen faster. Simply staying aware and open to these new experiences is enough. The divine feminine awakens in its own time, in its own way. As we move forward, we'll explore more signs of this awakening. Each sign is like a piece of a puzzle, helping you to see the bigger picture of the transformation happening within you. So stay tuned, stay curious, and most importantly, stay open to the magic unfolding in your life. As the divine feminine energy continues to awaken within you, you might notice a fascinating change. Your intuition starts to speak louder. It's like a quiet voice inside you that's always been there, but now it's becoming clearer and harder to ignore. Intuition isn't about having psychic powers or predicting the future. It's more like a deep inner knowing, a gut feeling that guides you. Think of it as your inner compass, always pointing you in the right direction, even when your logical mind isn't sure which way to go. You might start noticing this growing intuition in small ways at first. Maybe you think of an old friend out of the blue, and then they call you later that day. Or perhaps you get a strong feeling that you should take a different route to work, only to find out later that your usual route was blocked by an accident. As your intuition grows stronger, you might find yourself making decisions differently. Instead of endlessly weighing pros and cons, you might start trusting your gut more. It's not that logic and reason aren't important anymore. They definitely are. But now, you're balancing them with this inner knowing. This growing intuition can show up in your relationships too. You might find yourself better able to read people's emotions or intentions. It's like you're picking up on subtle cues that you might have missed before. This can help you connect more deeply with others and navigate social situations more smoothly. In your work life, intuition can be a powerful tool. You might get sudden insights into problems you've been struggling with or have creative ideas pop into your head out of nowhere. Many successful people talk about the importance of following their intuition in business decisions. But here's the thing about intuition. It often doesn't come with a big neon sign saying, this is your intuition speaking. It's usually more subtle than that. It might be a quiet feeling, a sudden thought, or even a physical sensation like goosebumps or a flutter in your stomach. Learning to recognize and trust your intuition takes practice. It's like developing a new skill. At first, you might doubt yourself or wonder if you're just making things up. But as you pay attention and start acting on these intuitive nudges, you'll likely find that they lead you to good places more often than not. One way to strengthen your intuition is to spend some quiet time each day just listening to your inner voice. This could be through meditation, journaling, or just sitting quietly for a few minutes. The key is to create space where you can hear your inner wisdom without the noise and distractions of daily life drowning it out. Another helpful practice is to start noticing your first impressions. When you meet someone new or encounter a new situation, what's your immediate feeling about it? Often, our intuition speaks first before our logical mind has time to analyze everything. As your intuition grows stronger, you might find yourself drawn to practices that help you develop it further. 
Things like tarot cards, pendulums, or other divination tools can be fun ways to explore your intuitive abilities. Remember, these aren't about predicting the future. They're tools for accessing your own inner wisdom. It's important to remember that growing intuition doesn't mean you should ignore logic or common sense. The Divine Feminine Awakening is about balance, not about replacing one way of knowing with another. Your intuition works best when it's partnered with your rational mind, not when it's trying to overrule it completely. As you learn to trust your intuition more, you might find that life starts to flow more easily. Decisions that used to stress you out might start to feel clearer. You might find yourself in the right place at the right time more often. It's like you're tapping into a deeper current of life that's always been there, but that you're only now learning to navigate. As the Divine Feminine continues to awaken within you, you might notice a shift in how you experience and relate to your emotions. This isn't about becoming more emotional. It's about developing a deeper understanding and acceptance of your feelings. Emotions are like waves in the ocean of your inner world. Sometimes they're calm and gentle. Sometimes they're stormy and intense. In our society, we often learn to push down our emotions, especially the difficult ones. We're told to get over it or toughen up. But the Divine Feminine Awakening invites us to take a different approach. You might find yourself becoming more aware of your emotions. It's like you're developing a finer sensitivity to your inner weather. You might start noticing subtle shifts in your mood that you would have missed before. This increased awareness can be a bit overwhelming at first. Suddenly you're feeling so much. But over time, it becomes a powerful tool for self-understanding. One of the big changes you might notice is a growing ability to sit with your emotions without immediately trying to change them. In the past, you might have tried to push away sadness or anger, seeing them as negative emotions that shouldn't be there. But now, you might find yourself able to just be with these feelings, to really experience them without judgment. This doesn't mean you enjoy feeling sad or angry, but you start to see that all emotions have their place and purpose. Sadness might be telling you about something you've lost or something that needs to change in your life. Anger might be signaling a boundary that's been crossed or an injustice that needs to be addressed. As you become more comfortable with your emotions, you might find that they move through you more easily. Instead of getting stuck in a bad mood for days, you might notice that you can feel your feelings fully and then let them go. It's like learning to surf the waves of your emotions instead of being dragged under by them. This new relationship with emotions can have a big impact on your relationships with others. As you become more accepting of your own feelings, you might find that you're better able to handle other people's emotions too. You might become a better listener, able to hold space for someone else's feelings without trying to fix or change them. You might also find that you're better able to express your emotions to others. Instead of bottling things up until you explode or avoiding difficult conversations altogether, you might find yourself able to share your feelings in a calm and clear way. This can lead to deeper, more authentic connections with the people in your life. Another interesting change you might notice is a growing appreciation for the full spectrum of emotions. Joy might feel more joyful, but you might also find a strange beauty in melancholy or a quiet strength in grief. It's like you're experiencing the full richness of the human emotional palette for the first time. This embracing of emotions doesn't mean you become a slave to your feelings. In fact, it often leads to greater emotional balance. When you're not constantly fighting or avoiding your emotions, they often become less intense and overwhelming. You might find that you're less likely to have emotional outbursts or to get stuck in negative emotional patterns. As your relationship with your emotions deepens, you might find yourself drawn to practices that help you explore and express your feelings. Things like art, music, dance, or journaling can become powerful tools for emotional exploration and release. You might find that creating something, whether it's a painting, a song, or a poem, helps you understand and process your emotions in a new way. As the divine feminine energy continues to blossom within you, you might notice a fascinating change, a growing urge to create. This isn't just about becoming an artist in the traditional sense. It's about tapping into the wellspring of creativity that exists within all of us. Creativity is often thought of as something only certain people have, the artists, the musicians, the writers. But the truth is, 
Creativity is a fundamental part of being human. It's how we solve problems, express ourselves, and bring new things into the world. The divine feminine awakening often brings this creative energy to the forefront. You might find yourself suddenly drawn to creative activities you've never tried before. Maybe you feel an urge to pick up a paintbrush, even if you haven't painted since elementary school. Or perhaps you find yourself humming tunes and thinking about writing songs, even if you've never considered yourself musical. This creative awakening can show up in all sorts of ways. You might find yourself coming up with new ideas at work, seeing innovative solutions to old problems. You might discover a knack for decorating your home or putting together unique outfits. You might even find that you have a way with words, able to express yourself more eloquently than before. One of the beautiful things about this creative awakening is that it's not about being good at something. It's about the joy of creating, of bringing something new into the world that didn't exist before. You might find that you're less concerned with the end result and more focused on the process of creation itself. This surge in creativity often comes with a sense of playfulness. You might find yourself more willing to experiment, to try new things without worrying about whether you're doing them right. It's like rediscovering the joy of finger painting as a child, messy, fun, and full of possibilities. As your creative energy grows, you might find that it changes how you see the world. Suddenly, everything becomes a potential source of inspiration. A walk in the park might spark ideas for a story. The play of light and shadow on your kitchen wall might inspire you to take up photography. It's like the world becomes more vibrant and alive with possibilities. This creative awakening can also change how you approach problems in your life. Creativity isn't just about making art. It's about thinking in new ways. You might find yourself coming up with innovative solutions to challenges at work or in your personal life. It's like your mind becomes more flexible, able to see things from different angles. You might also notice that your creative pursuits become a form of self-discovery. As you create, you learn more about yourself, your likes and dislikes, your unique way of seeing the world. Creating becomes a way of expressing parts of yourself that you might not have known were there. This surge in creativity can also be deeply healing. Many people find that creative activities help them process emotions, reduce stress, and connect with their inner selves. You might find that painting helps you work through feelings you can't put into words, or that dancing allows you to express joy in a way that nothing else can. As your creative energy grows, you might feel drawn to learn new skills or techniques. You might sign up for an art class, start watching tutorials online, or pick up books on creative writing. This desire to learn and grow is part of the creative spirit. There's always something new to discover, always room to expand your skills. Remember, this creative awakening isn't about becoming a professional artist or winning awards. It's about expressing yourself, exploring your inner world, and bringing more beauty and innovation into your life. Whether you're doodling in a notebook, experimenting with recipes in the kitchen, or reimagining your garden. You're tapping into the creative power of the divine feminine. As you embrace this creative energy, you might find that it brings more joy and excitement into your life. Creating can be a source of flow, those magical moments when you're so absorbed in what you're doing that you lose track of time. These moments of flow can be deeply fulfilling and energizing. Don't be surprised if your creative interests change and evolve over time. You might be really into painting for a while, then find yourself drawn to writing or music. This is all part of the journey. The important thing is to stay open to where your creativity wants to take you. As the divine feminine energy continues to awaken within you, you might notice a significant shift in how you relate to others. This isn't just about becoming more social or making new friends. It's about a fundamental change in how you connect with people, seeking deeper, more meaningful relationships. You might find yourself craving conversations that go beyond small talk. Instead of chatting about the weather or the latest TV shows, you might want to discuss dreams, fears, hopes, and the big questions of life. It's like you're hungry for a level of connection that touches the soul, not just the surface. This desire for deeper connections often starts with becoming more open and vulnerable yourself. You might find that you're more willing to share your true thoughts and feelings with others. This can be scary at first, 
Being vulnerable means risking rejection or judgment. But you might discover that when you open up, others often do the same, leading to richer, more authentic relationships. You might also notice that you're becoming a better listener. Instead of just waiting for your turn to speak, you might find yourself truly tuning in to what others are saying. You might become more aware of the emotions behind the words, picking up on subtle cues in tone of voice or body language. This deeper listening can make others feel truly heard and understood, strengthening your connections. As your capacity for empathy grows, you might find that you're able to see things from other people's perspectives more easily. This doesn't mean you always agree with everyone, but you might find it easier to understand where they're coming from. This increased empathy can help you navigate conflicts more smoothly and build bridges between differing viewpoints. You might also notice changes in how you approach romance and intimate relationships. The Divine Feminine Awakening often brings a desire for emotional intimacy that goes hand-in-hand hand with physical attraction. You might find yourself seeking partners who can connect with you on multiple levels, mental, emotional, and spiritual, as well as physical. This shift in how you connect with others isn't just about romantic relationships. You might find that your friendships are changing too. Some friendships might deepen as you share more of your true self. Others might naturally fall away if they no longer align with your new way of being. You might also find yourself attracting new friends who resonate with your evolving energy. As your connections deepen, you might find that you're more attuned to the needs of others. This doesn't mean you become a people pleaser or neglect your own needs. Instead, it's about finding a balance between giving and receiving, between self-care and care for others. You might discover a new joy in supporting others, not out of obligation, but from a genuine place of love and connection. You might also notice that you're becoming more aware of the interconnectedness of all things. This can lead to a greater sense of compassion, not just for the people in your immediate circle, but for humanity as a whole. You might find yourself more moved by global events, more interested in social issues, or more motivated to contribute to your community in some way. Remember, this shift towards deeper connections doesn't mean you need to bear your soul to everyone you meet. It's about quality, not quantity. You might actually find that you prefer spending time with a smaller circle of close friends rather than large groups. The key is that the connections you do have are more meaningful and fulfilling. As we've explored these signs of divine feminine awakening, you might be wondering what this journey looks like in real life. While everyone's experience is unique, I'd like to share a bit about my own path with you. For me, the awakening of the divine feminine was a gradual process. It wasn't like flipping a switch, it was more like the slow brightening of dawn. At first, I hardly noticed the changes. I just knew that something felt different, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. One of the first things I noticed was a growing sense of discontent with the status quo. Things that I'd always accepted as just the way things are started to feel off somehow. I found myself questioning old beliefs and habits, wondering if there might be a different way to live. Then came the connection with nature. I've always enjoyed being outdoors, but suddenly it became almost a necessity. I found myself craving time in nature like never before. I started taking long walks in the park, feeling a sense of peace and renewal that I'd never experienced before. I even started a small garden, marveling at the miracle of seeds sprouting and growing under my care. As my connection with nature deepened, I noticed my intuition getting stronger. At first, it was little things, hunches that turned out to be right, gut feelings about people that proved accurate. But as I learned to trust these intuitive nudges, they became stronger and clearer. I started making decisions based on this inner knowing, often with surprising and positive results. The changes in my emotional landscape were both challenging and rewarding. I found myself experiencing emotions more intensely than ever before. At times, it felt overwhelming, like I was on an emotional roller coaster. But as I learned to sit with these feelings, to really feel them without judgment, I discovered a new kind of emotional balance. I became more resilient, able to navigate life's ups and downs with greater ease. Creativity blossomed in unexpected ways. I never considered myself particularly artistic, but suddenly I felt drawn to express myself creatively. I started writing poetry, 
something I hadn't done since high school. I took up painting, not worrying about whether I was good at it, but simply enjoying the process of putting color on canvas. These creative pursuits became a source of joy and self-discovery. Perhaps the most profound change was in my relationships. As I became more authentic and open, I found my connections with others deepening. Some relationships changed or fell away, which was painful at times. But new connections formed deep, soulful friendships that nourished me in ways I'd never experienced before. Through it all, there were moments of doubt and confusion. Times when I wondered if I was on the right path, if these changes were really for the better. But looking back, I can see how each step, each challenge, each moment of growth was part of a larger journey of becoming more fully myself. This awakening hasn't made my life perfect or problem-free, but it has given me tools to navigate life's challenges with more grace and wisdom. It's opened me up to a deeper sense of connection with myself, with others, with the world around me. And for that, I'm profoundly grateful. As we come to the end of our exploration of the signs of divine feminine awakening, I hope you found insights that resonate with your own experiences. Perhaps you've recognized some of these signs in yourself, or maybe you're just beginning to sense the stirrings of this energy within you. Remember, the awakening of the divine feminine is not about becoming someone different. It's about becoming more fully yourself. It's a journey of uncovering the wisdom, creativity, and power that have always been within you, waiting to be recognized and expressed. This awakening is not always easy. It can bring challenges as old patterns are disrupted and new ways of being emerge. You might find yourself questioning things you've always taken for granted or feeling out of step with the world around you at times. This is all part of the process. But along with the challenges come profound gifts a deeper connection with nature and your own inner nature, a stronger sense of intuition to guide you through life's complexities, a richer emotional life that allows you to experience the full spectrum of human feeling, a wellspring of creativity that allows you to express your unique vision, and connections with others that nourish your soul and contribute to the healing of our world. As you continue on this journey, be patient with yourself. The Divine Feminine awakens in its own time, in its own way. There's no need to force the process or to compare your journey with anyone else's. Trust that you are exactly where you need to be. Stay curious and open to the changes you're experiencing. Keep exploring, keep questioning, keep growing. Journal about your experiences, talk with trusted friends, seek out others who are on similar paths. Remember, while this journey is deeply personal, you're not alone. Most importantly, trust yourself. Trust the wisdom that's awakening within you. Trust your intuition, your emotions, your creativity. Trust the deep knowing that's guiding you towards a more authentic, connected, and fulfilling life. The awakening of the divine feminine is not just a personal journey. As more and more of us awaken to this energy, we have the potential to create profound changes in our world. We can bring more balance, more compassion, more creativity and connection to our families, our communities, and our planet. So embrace your awakening. Celebrate the changes you're experiencing. And know that by honoring the divine feminine within yourself, you're contributing to the healing and transformation of our world. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the signs of divine feminine awakening. May your journey be filled with discovery, growth, and joy. And remember, this is just the beginning. The adventure of awakening continues to unfold, bringing new insights and experiences with each day. Embrace it all and trust the path that's unfolding before you.